Kel Richards, a well-known Australian radio broadcaster, author, and journalist. He has written a range of books, from crime novels to books for children and young adults. His best-selling Aussie Bible has sold more than 120,000 copies. Kel currently presents a Sunday night program, Connections, at the Sydney radio station 2CH. Today, he is here with us to talk about the ways of communication. The, the fundamental principle of communications is it's not just what I do, it's what I get you to do. Communication is not just me shooting at a target, because if that was what communication was, the target wouldn't do anything, it would hang on the wall and be inert. That doesn't happen in communications. There's a transmitter and there's a receiver. And what I need to do in communications is I need to get the receiver receiving. So in other words, it's, I need to get you to turn on your receiver if you're going to pick up what I'm saying. So it's, it's, there, are, there are two parts to the communications process. Yeah. So what inspires your love of Australian English? It, partly because I'm Australian. You see, my argument is I've got a new book called The Story of Australian English, <clears throat> which as a, as, a, as a journalist you should be reading. Australians are very good at inventing words and phrases and say things. If you look at John Clark, part of the thing that we like about John Clark is the inventive way he puts words together. That's part of what is so delightful about him. Uh, and, and we enjoy that about anyone who's a good communicator. I think, possibly more than other things, but Australian language is actually the most colourful, the most interesting language in the world. During your career, have you noticed any major changes within the communication industry and radio as well, I guess? I've been in the radio industry for a long time. I mean, I'm now 46 and I have been for many years. Uh, so I, I, I've been around for a long time and I've seen a lot change. I worry that craft skills are diminishing in radio. When I joined the ABC, which was a long time ago, there was a like a three-day induction course where you became part of the ABC, and they talked about the ABC role, and they talked about they talked about Australian language, a whole lot of things. That tends not to happen these days. People just join the ABC. There are skills involved in working to a microphone. It seems to me nowadays that kind of thinking doesn't happen anymore. The idea that there are craft skills it seems to me there was an assumption amongst a whole lot of broadcast executives that. You stick people in front of a microphone, either they can do it or they can't do it. Yeah. The idea that there's a learnable skill, I worry, has disappeared from the industry over the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Yeah. In the current media, a lot of like, current forms are being replaced by like online sources and sort of blogs posting all that. Do you reckon that's affecting communications industry? Tweeting is certainly affecting yeah. people's ability to spell. There's no doubt about that. And their ability to find the, the, the uh, shift key. No one can find the shift key anymore. It's all in lowercase. I mean, what's that all about? Is that just laziness? I mean, I, when, I, when I text messages, right? Yeah. Because of my age, I look around for the shift key and I use upper and lowercase. But I'm about the only person who does in text messages. It's a change, not a death. I don't think things are dying, but I think things are changing. So do you have any tips for young communication students looking to get involved in the industry? I guess specifically radio? I mean, listen to people who are good, good communicators. Listen to what they're doing and how they're doing it. Yeah. Basic skills uh, such as understanding emphasis and pausing and things like that. Pauses are really important. Pauses keep together a group of words that should be together and they keep separately words that should be separated. And pauses actually make a point. And you need not to be afraid of pauses. Yeah. There's a real tendency to think, I've just got to keep it all coming. I think yeah. that's dangerous. I think if you can learn to use pauses as well as actors use pauses, you actually have more effect. Learning to stress properly is really important. Just those basic craft skills of enunciating things I think are important. Yeah. Um, in radio at least, you need to sit, at, sit at and look at the microphone and talk to it like a person. Radio is individual. What's yeah. attractive about radio as a medium is it's one-to-one. -one. You don't address a big audience. You're not in the Albert Hall, you're not talking to 60,000 people. Even though the ratings say you've got 60,000 listeners, you're talking to one person. And to be able to sit in the chair and look at the microphone and talk to one person is the real craft skill of broadcasting. And when you say something, you need to be able to say, how is this sounding to them? How would they be responding to that? So it's, it's that kind of very personal connection yeah. that makes radio work as a medium. Although the interview has come to an end, Kel has provided students a deeper insight into ways of communication through his experiences in different mediums such as radio and writing, as well as his love for the Australian English language.